All right, so we're going to tackle sixth grade ELA. We're supposed to be reading The Cowardly Lion and the Hungry Tiger by Frank L. Frank Baum. I just happen to know that this is going to be literary because it's from one of my favorite series, of course, The Wizard of Oz. So I'm going to put literary and I'm going to put Wizard of Oz as my guessing what it's about. Okay. All right, so we're going to read hashtag. We're going to, um, you're going to summarize. We can do it uh, like the CSPS, and then it can convert into the required summary on here. So um, here we go. All right. Um, in the splendid palace of the Emerald City, which is one which is in the center of the fairy land of Oz, is a great throne room. This is where Princess Azuma, the ruler, sits in a throne of glistering emeralds for an hour each day and listens to all the troubles of her people, which they are sure to tell her about. Around Azuma's throne on such occasions are grouped are all the important personages of Oz, such as the Scarecrow, Tick Tock the Clockwork Man, the Tin Woodman, the Wizard of Oz, and other famous fairy people. Little Dorothy usually has a seat at Ozma's feet. And crouched on either side of the throne are two enormous beasts known as the Hungry Tiger and the Cowardly Lion. So I'm just going to kind of put Oz over here. Hashtag Oz. These two beasts are Ozma's chief guardians, but as everyone loves the beautiful girl princess, there has never been any disturbances in the great throne room or anything for the guardians to do but look fierce and solemn and keep quiet until the royal audience is over and the people go away to their homes. So we'll just put uh, guards here. Guards with no jobs, maybe? <laughs> okay. <coughs> of course, no one would dare be naughty while the huge lion and tiger crouch beside the throne but the fact is, the people of Oz are very seldomly naughty. So Ozma's big guards are more ornamental than useful. No one realizes that better than the beasts themselves. Okay, so not needed. One day after the, everyone had left the throne room, except the cowardly lion and the hungry tiger, the lion yawned and said to his friend, I'm getting tired of this job. No one is afraid of us and no one pays attention to us. Okay. Uh, tired? Of job? That is true, replied the big tiger, purring softly. We might as well be in the thick jungles where we were born as trying to protect Ozma when she needs no protection. And I'm dreadfully hungry all the time. You have enough to eat, I'm sure, said the lion, swaying his tail slowly back and forth. Enough, perhaps, but not the kind of food I long for. Okay, so sad, maybe? Answered the tiger. What I'm hungry for is fat babies. I have a great desire to eat a few fat babies, and then perhaps the people of Oz would fear me, and I'd become more important. Ooh. Eat babies? Ooh, it's getting a little crazy here. True, agreed the lion. It would stir up quite a scene if you ate one, but one fat baby. As for myself, my claws are sharp as needles and strong as crowbars. My teeth are powerful enough to tear a person to pieces in a few seconds. I could spring upon a man and make chop suey of him. There would be a wild excitement in the Emerald City. People would fall upon their knees and beg for mercy. That, in my opinion, would render me very important. So maybe a hashtag fantasy. He's kind of fantasizing about what he could do. After you had torn the person to pieces, what would you do next? Asked the tiger sleepily. Well, then I would roar so loudly it would shake the earth and I stalk away to the jungle and hide myself before anyone could attack me or kill me for what I had done. I see, nodded the tiger. You are really cowardly. I'm going to do hashtag cowardly with a question mark. To be sure, that is why I'm named the Cowardly Lion. That is why I've always been so tame and peaceable. But I'm awfully tired of being tame, added the lion with a sigh. And it would be fun to raise a row and show people what a terrible beast I really am. 
The tiger remained silent for several minutes, thinking deeply as he slowly washed his face with his left paw. Then he said, I'm getting old. It would please me to eat at least one fat baby before I die. Suppose we surprise these people of Oz and prove our power. What do you say? We'll walk out of here just as usual, and the first baby we meet I'll eat in a jiffy. And the first man or woman you meet, you will tear to pieces. Then we will both run out of the city gates and gallop across the country and hide in the jungle before anyone can stop us. All right, I'm game, said the lion, yawning again. Okay, so their plans, maybe, here? Their plans? All right, this is pretty interesting. That he showed two rows of large, sharp teeth. The tiger got up and stretched his great sleek body. Seen any of them old hydrophobies in the last day or two? Come on, he said. The lion stood up and proved he was the larger of the two, for he was almost as big as a small horse. Okay, um, so just more talking. I'm not even going to hashtag that because that really didn't have a whole lot there. Out of the palace they walked and met no one. They passed through the beautiful grounds, past fountains and beds of lovely flowers, and met no one. Then they unlatched a gate and entered the street of the city and met no one. I wonder how a fat baby will taste, said the tiger, as they stalked majestically along, side by side. I imagine it will taste like nutmeg, said the lion. No, said the tiger. I have an idea it will taste like gumdrops. They turned a corner, but met no one, for the people of Emerald City usually take their naps at this hour of the afternoon. All right, so we'll just put nap time. Must be nice. I guess that's kind of like what we do in COVID now. <laughs> I wonder how many pieces I ought to tear a person into, said the lion in a thoughtful voice. Sixty would be about right, suggested the tiger. Would that hurt any more than to tear one into a dozen pieces asked the lion with a little shudder who cares whether it hurts or not growled the tiger the lion did not reply they entered a side street but bit no one suddenly they heard a child crying aha exclaimed the tiger there's my meat uh-oh they found a child he rushed around the corner the lion following and came upon a nice fat baby sitting in the middle of the street, crying as in great distress. What's the matter? asked the tire, crouching before the baby. I lost my mama mama, wailed the baby. Well, you poor little thing, said the great beast, softly stroking the child's head with its paw. Don't cry, my dear, for mama can't be far away. I'll help you find her. Okay, so we're going to put lost mama. Kind of, kind of getting a little scary here go on said the lion who stood by go on where asked the tiger looking up go on and eat your fat baby okay so he's uh like uh encouraging to eat <laughs> encouraging to eat the baby why you dreadful creature said the tiger reproachfully would you want me to eat a poor little lost baby and the beast gathered the little one in its strong, hairy arms and tried to comfort it by rocking it gently back and forth. So, no. No. <laughs> the lion growled low in his throat and seemed very much disappointed. But at that moment, a scream reached their ears and a woman came bounding out of the house into the street. Seeing her baby in the embrace of the monster tiger, the woman screamed again and rushed toward, forward to rescue it. In her haste, she caught her foot in her skirt and tumbled head over heels overhead. She stopped with such a bump, but she saw many stars in the heavens, although it was broad daylight. And she lay there helpless in a helpless manner, all tangled up and unable to stir. So that's the mom. With one bound and a roar like thunder, the huge lion was beside her. With his strong jaws, he grasped her dress and raised her to an upright position. Poor thing, are you hurt? He gently asked. Gasping for breath, the woman struggled to free herself and tried to walk, but she limped badly and tumbled. 
So the lion helped. Lion helps the mom. Remember, you can pause at any time to catch up. Uh, you can rewind if you need to. Whatever you need to do, you can listen to it more than once. She fell down again. My baby, she said bleedingly. The baby's all right, don't worry, replied the lion. And then he added, keep quiet now and I'll carry you back to your house. And the hungry tiger will carry your baby. So they're helping. The tiger who had approached the place with the child in his arms asked in astonishment, aren't you going to tear her into 60 pieces? No, nor into six pieces, answered the lion indignantly. I'm not such a brute as to destroy a poor woman who has hurt herself trying to save her lost baby. If you are so cruel and bloodthirsty, you may leave me and go away, for I do not care to associate with you. That's all right, answered the tiger. I'm not cruel, not in the least. I'm only hungry, but I thought you were cruel. So they're kind of questioning each other. Like, you know, like, I thought you were going to eat the baby, and then I thought you were going to tear the woman up. Thank heaven I'm respectable, said the lion with dignity. Then he raised the woman and then with much gentleness carried her into the house where she laid her, uh, where he laid her upon the sofa. The tiger followed with the baby, which he safely deposited beside its mother. The little one liked the hungry tiger, grasping the enormous beast by both ears. The baby kissed the beast's nose to show he was grateful and happy. Aww. So like a thank, thank you. Thank you very much, said the woman. I've often heard what good beasts you are, in spite of your power to do mischief and mankind. Now I know the stories are true. I do not think either of you have ever had an evil thought. Aww. So, no evil? <laughs> Even though they did have evil thoughts, but they didn't carry it out. The hungry tiger and the cowardly lion hung their heads and did not look into each other's eyes, for both were shamed and humbled. They crept away and stalked back to, through the streets until they again entered the palace grounds, where they retreated to the pretty, comfortable rooms they occupied at the back of the palace. There they silently crouched, crouched in their usual corners to think over their adventure. Okay, so they were kind of ashamed of what they had done, <laughs> even though they should be proud. After a while, the tiger said sleepily, I don't believe fat babies taste like gumdrops. I'm quite sure they have the flavor of raspberry tarts. My, how hungry I am for fat babies, the lion grumbled. You're a humbug, said he. Am I, retorted the tiger with a sneer. Tell me then, into how many pieces you usually tear your victims, my bold lion. So they're kind of arguing here. The lion impatiently thumped the floor with his tail. To tear anyone into pieces would soil my claws and blunt my teeth, he said. I'm glad I didn't muss myself up this afternoon by hurting that poor mother. The tiger looked at him steadily, then yawned a wide, wide yawn. You're a coward, he remarked. Well, said the lion, it's better to be a coward than to do wrong. To be sure, answered the other. And that reminds me that I nearly lost my own reputation, for had I eaten that fat baby, I would now not now be hung, the hungry tiger. It's better to go hungry, seems to me, than to be cruel to a child. And then they dropped their heads on their paws and went to sleep. So they kind of like accepted that they aren't going to do those things. <laughs> accepted facts. Okay. And then we have the vocabulary, personages, people who are notable or great, solemn, deeply serious, ornamental, acting as an ornament or decorative, jiffy in a short unspecified period of time, majestically showing the qualities of royalty and great dignity, distress, a danger or discomfort, reproach to criticize or bring shame, indignant, showing anger at something unjust. Okay, that was the vocabulary. So, oh, now we have questions. Okay, make sure you're putting your name on your packets. Again, uh, we're still getting packets without names, so we want to make sure 
let you do that. I'm just gonna put mine in here. It gives you time to do yours. Why are the lion and tiger bored at the beginning of the story? So obviously this is gonna be in the beginning. We're gonna see if we can find it. They're bored. Okay. Why are they bored? It's pretty much here. There's never been any disturbance in the great throne room. So we're gonna say question one. This is gonna be, oh, let's number our paragraphs because they are not numbered on here. I'm gonna get a different colored pen to do that. I'm gonna use my purple pen. So I'm gonna say, this is paragraph one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 starts here, and I think it continues, obviously. So I'm just gonna make it 16 again right here. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, and this one's 43 again, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63 paragraphs. That was a lot. All right, so back to the questions. That was in paragraph two was the first part of this. It was in the beginning of the story. That is the beginning of the story. The people of Oz rarely misbehave. Nobody acts bad around the lion and the tiger. Nobody wants to hurt Oz Ozma, or they are bored for all of these reasons. Okay, so... Make sure you pick the best answer. They're, they're all correct, but pick the best one. Which one of these is not a reason why the lion and tiger make their plan? All right. So we need to go and see why they made the plan. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so uh, right here, no one is afraid of us. Uh, she needs no protection, dreadfully hungry, so paragraphs five and six, definitely, that's question number two, it's going to be in paragraphs five and six, remember you're looking for a reason that is not, so you want a true false, so you want to do true false for each one, okay, you want to find the one that's false. You want the false one, okay? Same with this one. This is also a knot, which is not part of the lion and tiger's plan. All right, so we need to go find their plan. Uh, let's see. Uh, of course, the that's going to be here, it looks like, in paragraph 8 and 9. So this is gonna be question number three, paragraphs eight and nine. You're looking again for the false one. So we're gonna do paragraph eight and nine. You're looking for the false. I'm gonna do TF on each one. So if it's true, you circle true. If it's false, you circle false. 
The lion will tear up the first person he sees. The tiger will eat a baby. The lion will become the king of Oz. They will hide in the jungle after, after it's done. Number four, according to the text, which of the following is true? So this might be the whole thing. So we're going to have to look through the whole story for this one. The lion is bigger than the tiger. The lion is hungrier than the tiger. The tiger is braver than the lion. The lion is smaller than the tiger. You want an actual fact. It says in there, one of these, one of these, that's an actual fact. The rest could be assumed, but one of them is actually a fact. Which figurative language technique is used in the following sentence? So everything's right here. We don't need to go look back in the story. I would roar so loudly it would shake the earth. So a simile uses like or as. Okay, so does it have a like or as in it? A hyperbole is like a big exaggeration. So like, you know, making something much bigger than it is. A metaphor is like a simile, but no like or as. So it just compares two things. Is this comparing two things? Or personification uh, gives like human traits. A lion does roar. Does a human roar? I don't know. You tell me. All right, number six, which event happens last? So it's going to be towards the end of the story. And at the end of the story, what happened? They kind of accepted the, the facts, right? The lion and tiger feel guilty. A woman falls and injures herself. The lion and tiger wander the streets. Or the tiger rescues a baby. So a lot of these happened in the beginning of the story, in the middle, I mean, in the more in the middle. Like that's where all the action was in the middle. And then at the end, how did they feel? Which best expresses a lesson that the lion learned? It's never too late to follow your dreams. Always back up your words with actions. Never give up on your life goals no matter what. It's better to be teased than to do something you regret. Regret Again, this is at the end. Number eight, how motivated the, how motivated the lion and the tiger were to follow through with their plan? How motivated were they? A, the lion and tiger were very serious about wanting to hurt people. The lion was just trying to sound brave, but the tiger almost ate someone. The lion and tiger never had any real intentions of hurting anyone. The lion might have eaten that woman had the tiger not talked him out of it. So you have to go back to the, about the, the beginning, the middle, where the action starts. Which best describes the narrator's tone in this sentence from the last paragraph? So I don't need to go back to the story because it's right here. Tell me then, into how many pieces you usually tear your victims, my bold lion? Is he sincere? Meaning like, you know, I agree with you. Is he being sarcastic? Is he being spiteful or sweet? Okay, those are your questions. Oh, there's one more question. Which prediction is best supported by evidence from the text? Okay, so the prediction is like something that's going to happen. It's only a matter of time before the tiger convinces the lion to kill. The lion will probably return to the jungle, learn to rule, and come back to conquer Oz. The tiger will one day live out his desire to find out how, many fat, how a fat baby tastes. Or the lion and the tiger will keep living boring lives in the comforts of the palace. So this is kind of what you think is going to happen. But based on what happened in the story, one answer is the best answer. All right, so answer the following questions in complete sentences. So I'm going to help you get those started. All right. Irony is when something turns out exactly the opposite of the way it was expected. What is ironic about the lion and tiger's adventure? Or, what makes the end of the lion and tiger's adventure so funny? Use quotes from the text when you're explaining your reply. Alright. So, um, I'm going to put uh, the end of the lion and tiger's adventure is so funny because...
okay and so that's how you start it to make it a complete sentence and then you answer it but it has to have evidence text evidence from the story summarize the text list five key events from the story in the order in which they happen your summary should include five main points from the beginning middle and end okay so we're going to do two things with this we are going to I'm gonna find a piece of paper first blank paper in here but okay let me get over here and get some okay so we're going to go ahead and do the the CSPS that should help you and then you'll have to do the rest okay oops sorry I knocked everything didn't mean to there we go all right so we're going to do um the lion and tiger I'm just abbreviating I'm going to put my name on it because I'm going to go ahead and submit this to my teacher as well. I'm going to break my paper into the four sections. I'm going to do C, S, P, S. Okay, so my characters obviously are the lion, the cowardly lion, right? And the hungry tiger. The setting is the palace at Oz and then of course it moves to the streets of Oz the problem is the lion and tiger are bored And want people to fear them. Okay, what was the solution or the outcome? Well, <clears throat> they helped. They helped a baby and a mother instead of eating them. All right, so this actually has like four of your elements from here. First, then, next, after that, and finally. So you could say your first part could be your, this right here, your characters and your setting. Then your problem could be your then. But instead of the solution, the solution probably would want to be at the very end or near the end, maybe the after that here. And then finally would be like their feelings after they finished what they had done. So that should help you finish that. And that will conclude this week's ELA. Of course, you should be reading on, let me see, on Epic. And you should try to test as much as you can. There's also Myon. And you can get on those on your phone. They've got your AR right here so that you can get into your AR. It did take me a little bit, but I finally was able to get my son into the AR. So it is possible, okay? Um, now your goal for this, this six weeks is four points. So that's only like, you know, eight little books or maybe one good size book. If you like this Wizard of Oz, you could read the Wizard of Oz and that would be interesting. And that'll do it.